Aung San Suu Kyi won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1991. At the time, she was the world's best-known political prisoner, spending 15 years under house arrest for standing against a military dictatorship. It was hoped she could bring peace to Myanmar, formerly known as Burma, a country ravaged by civil war. After 25 years of repression, Ms. Suu Kyi's party won an election by a landslide in 2015. We hope that this will be the beginning of a new era. Unbelievable. We thought she is a godmother. She will bring prosperity, peace for everyone, and she has a big heart to treat everybody equally. But Ms. Suu Kyi failed to acknowledge the plight of the Rohingya Muslim minority, who've been described as the most persecuted on earth. The Burmese army have attacked Rohingya villages, burning down buildings, killing and raping as they go. Wai Wai Niu is a Rohingya Muslim whose father, like Aung San Suu Kyi, was locked up for opposing the military dictatorship in the 1990s. My father was put in jail for 47 years along with his family members, including me. I lost my future as a teenager. I never blame my father or the movement or the Aung San Suu Kyi. She used to be my hero. But right now what we are seeing, her positions against minority and Rohingya, it's, it's break my heart. There are one million Rohingyas living in Myanmar, most of whom are in Rakhine state. Although Rohingyas have lived in the country since pre-colonial times, they were stripped of their citizenship in the 1980s. They're the largest stateless group of people in the world. Buddhist nationalists and the country's army have targeted the Rohingya for decades because of their religion. Thousands of Rohingya have lost their lives. When Dong San Suu Kyi came into power, the Rohingya minority was very hopeful, but then things uh, get worse. Since Ms. Suu Kyi came to power, the persecution of the Rohingyas has increased. Strict laws govern their movement and where they can live. 120,000 live in squalid camps as a result of previous conflicts. There has been a lot of human rights abuses, for example, sexual violence, torture, arbitrary arrest. After years of persecution, some Rohingyas are fighting back, forming a militia group that targets military and police in Rakhine State. In August 2017, the group, known as the Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army, attacked police outposts. The army responded with brutality, killing hundreds of Rohingyas, prompting more than 150,000 to flee to neighboring Bangladesh. Despite the ongoing slaughter, Ms. Suu Kyi still won't mention the Rohingya by name. The Nobel Peace Prize laureate has not even condemned the violence often even defending the role of the military in the face of the growing humanitarian disaster. An online petition calling for Ms. Suu Kyi to be stripped of her Nobel Peace Prize has been signed by over 300,000 people. To some extent, Ms. Suu Kyi's hands are tied. The constitution drafted by the army gives her little control of the security services, and public opinion is very hostile to the Rohingyas. This makes it hard for her to have a real impact on the situation. But she doesn't even speak out about the Rohingya's suffering. Some people say she may have a reason not to use the word Rohingya. They have to see Rohingya as their people, and they have to treat them as other people in the country. As a leader uh, who struggled for democracy, who had this passions of promoting human rights and rule of law, she should take a firm position in respecting minority rights. Ms. Suu Kyi came to power on a promise of peace, ending conflict within the country and uniting ethnic divisions. But Myanmar remains racked by ethnic conflict. At the very least, she should acknowledge the Rohingya's suffering and call on the army to end its bloodthirsty campaign.